I speak to you in the name of our living God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the conversation that Seth Lloyd just facilitated before this service about the history of Christ Church, not only our buildings and the physical structures in which we find ourselves, but importantly, the service and the outreach and the engagement, the living with permeably our community that our forebears have showed. Seth mentioned this quote about legacy, saying, we are in a continuum, just as we reach back to our ancestors for fundamental values. So we, as guardians of that legacy, must reach ahead to our children and their children. And we do so with a sense of sacredness in that reaching. We find ourselves today in the readings that we have just heard on the precipice of Veterans Day as Christ Church in the city of Detroit on this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost We will get to 24 Sundays after Pentecost this year, so we're getting there. On this Sunday, November 10th, 2019, we find ourselves in that tension of reaching, in that sacredness of reaching, reaching behind and ahead of acting in such a way that we could see what we cannot see, acting upon our faith of life amidst death, of death not being the final end, but of life emerging from it and about it and around it. How do we act? How do we step? How do we march day by day in this faith, this hope of things not seen, this faith of the resurrection amidst death? How do we, in the words of our opening hymn, keep bright in us the vision of days when war shall cease? when hatred and division give way to love and peace, when we cannot see that quite yet. The Sadducees to whom Jesus is in conversation today were a group of Jews in that day. Um, We hear a lot more in our Gospels from the Pharisees who were another group. The Sadducees at that time were distinguished by being something of a social elite, also something of a religious elite, and thereby having some remove then of the community of which they are surrounded. Significantly, the Sadducees um, did not believe in any life after death. It is important for us Christians to recall that Jews of Jesus' day, some of them did believe in bodily resurrection after death. The Sadducees were among those who, who did not believe. And though Jesus is in conversation more frequently with the Pharisees, who are a somewhat larger group, um, the Sadducees come to him today with a question. And we might hear it with something of a a joking or a sort of gotcha voice, because they think they're going to get Jesus with this question. Which is about how do our 
social and family relationships in this life translate then to the life to come. If in the practice, as was common and in fact legally encouraged, religiously encouraged at that time, when a, a brother who had been married died without children, then his brother would, wear, would marry his widow in order to perpetuate the family and the family's name. So the Sadducees think they're going to get Jesus speechless with, say that happened seven times in a family. Then, if you, if, say, there is life after this one, then how could that woman, who would that woman call her husband in the age to come, if, in fact, she had been married to seven brothers? And it's as if Jesus is saying, ah, I am actually talking about something that we cannot see. I am talking about the reality that life emerges and thrives and changes us all around us even when we can't see it, especially when we can't see it. That even now we are in the presence of angels, that all of us, past, present, and yet to come, are children of God. And because God is a God of life, of life that tramples death, then whether we are alive or we are dead, we are all alive in God. It's a game changer of a response, as Jesus is wont to do. I want to talk a little bit about the art that you see on the cover of your bulletin. This piece of art came to mind for this week, thinking about this very conversation between Jesus and the Sadducees about the reality of resurrection. The charge that is before us to step daily into the faith that, of resurrection that we cannot see. How do we keep moving, keep stepping toward that which we cannot see? I also think about our veterans and all who serve in the armed forces, exemplars of the courage to step toward that which we cannot see but that we believe with all our heart, to give of our whole selves and our whole beings toward freedom and justice and inclusion. The, the piece of art before you is called The Procession. The act, then, of walking toward what we believe, even when we cannot see it. And it will not surprise you that the original work is much larger than this reproduction. So I acknowledge that it does need a magnifying glass to see the intricate detail here. But even at a glance, it is complex, it is intricate, countless figures and lives are woven into this one procession, each doing their own things, their own gifts, some dancing, some bearing gifts, some caring for the sick, some on a boat, some looking up at the stars. I want to share with you some words of a theologian who has written about this very piece. A contemporary theologian, Alejandro Garcia Rivera, who, writing about this piece, says, The procession invites us to join in its imagination, and in doing so, we also become part of the procession. Our living story commingles with the little stories of the mission, and then somehow we realize that our story is part of a larger story, a big story of heaven coming to earth and bringing forth new life." End quote. What courage it takes to allow one story to be part of a bigger story. And we cannot see where that, where that adventure will lead.
How might we dare offer our own stories as part of a larger story? Every day, I imagine those who have built this place and in so doing, invited our stories and those of all who will come after us into the story of Christ Church. Swanson himself writes about this piece. It is not my desire that the complexity and intricacy of this work confuse or confound, but that it illuminate and inspire. We are invited to join together in the procession to help see each other in ways that we have never seen before. To help each other see in ways that we have never seen before. To help one another see again what we have forgotten. To see something familiar in a new way, in a new light, from a different perspective. Again, commenting on precisely this complexity and intricacy of this piece, which is perhaps the first thing that might jump out at, at one. The historian Howard Zinn writes, it is what we choose to emphasize in our complex history that will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places where people have behaved magnificently, oh, what it might be like to behave magnificently. <laughs> this gives us the energy to act, and if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. As if to note, in his words, and acknowledge that we live, to live is to be a mind, is to be complex. To live is to be in and saturated with complexity. To live, especially in this day, is to be distracted, to be overwhelmed, to be disoriented, to be confused, to perhaps be quite far from ourselves and our hearts, and what really matters. Zinn seems to suggest that if we, if we allow all of those pulls on our energy to get the best of us, then our behavior will follow. But if we focus on our faith, if we focus on that which is most important, then also our behavior will follow. And when we do so, it will not look like an immediate grand utopian future, attractive as that might sound. It will look like one step after another step after another step. And all of us doing it together, it will look like a procession, vibrant, glorious, unsure, yet in it together. Zinn continues, consider the future as an infinite succession, procession of presence. And to live now as we think humans should live in defiance of all that detracts us is itself a marvelous victory, the victory of faith, I would add. Swanson himself concludes, the great procession is a celebration of life and faith where the rich and poor march in unison the strong carry the weak, and the weak humble the proud. Where those who know the dance teach those who are just learning, and a child lifts high the banner for all to follow in joy, in peace, in love. 
This is the reality, he says, the spirit that I want to make real in this work. This is the reality, I add, that we make real together as we seek it together, never alone, as we dare to let our stories commingle with those who have gone before us and all those who will come after us. This is the reality to which we are called, to which our faith draws us and calls us, shining the light ahead of our path one step at a time, and that is enough. We are in it together. Thanks be to God.